questions. The Premier holds crisis talks after almost 400 new cases of coronavirus. Police hit out at COVID idiots, including one man who drove to Wodonga for a Big Mac. Three more deaths linked to our aged care scandal as a top health official is moved aside. Plus, breaking news on the Eastern Freeway police tragedy, a Seven News exclusive. Collingwood coach Nathan Buckley in hot water for breaching AFL rules in the Perth hub. And Mad Jack Daw makes an emotional comeback to footy. Live from Melbourne, Seven News with Blake Johnson starts now. Good evening. Stricter lockdown rules could be announced as soon as tomorrow as the health department struggles to contain Victoria's second wave. They're trying to trace more than 300 new cases with community transmission rising at dangerous levels. Life for Victorians in lockdown is a waiting game. Waiting for a takeaway coffee or to enter a Bunnings store for weekend DIY. But in the fight against coronavirus, time is running out. We've got uh, numbers that are too high. We've got every reason to believe that these current settings will not get this job done, that we will need to do more. Harsher restrictions are coming. The sooner you lock it all down, to get rid of it, the better. Even it's going to be tough, but I think it would be better for the overall economy. It's not going to be easy, but I think it's necessary. But the Premier couldn't say exactly when. Today is not the day to announce uh, any further steps, uh, but that work is under active... Uh, that, that is an active process. We are giving due consideration to a whole range of different options. The Australian Medical Association has a clear idea of what stage four should look like. It wants Victoria to mimic New Zealand with everything shut save for supermarkets, pharmacies and medical services. By going harder and sharper and quicker we will get out of this I believe a lot faster and in a better state overall when we look down the track rather than progressively continuing with this bubbling set of numbers. Those numbers hovered in the triple figures for the 27th day in a row. 397 new positive cases overnight, but fewer than 10% were linked to known outbreaks. The majority are still under investigation, a sure sign that community transmission is on the up. The Premier also flagging a new category of cases, the most concerning since the pandemic began. There's an additional 49 cases, mystery cases, 49 cases where we simply cannot track back what the index case is, what's the zero case, where did it start? Almost 3,500 positive cases have been recorded over the last week. That included two of our worst days of the pandemic so far. It comes as the death toll climbed too. Three Victorians died of coronavirus, a man in his 80s and two women in their 80s and 90s. The really tragic thing with this disease is that essentially every 100 cases you're going to get a fatality. Michael Baker engineered the lockdown that saved New Zealand. He agrees with the AMA that Victoria needs to make drastic changes. The alternative is really quite awful and that is going in and out of lockdown maybe for many months, maybe for a couple of years. As the stakes continue to rise, pressure is building behind the scenes. The Deputy Chief Health Officer, Dr Annalise Van Diemen, demoted from her position, shifted to another area of public health. It's quite difficult to think beyond this particular crisis, but we, we have to have systems and processes in place that do just that. And the big question now is when will those restrictions be announced and just how far will they go? There are a number of rumours swirling around this afternoon, but Seven News understands a small and closed group of government and health officials are currently working to nut those details out. Understandably, they are remaining tight-lipped so as not to inflame tensions in the community and also so as not to upset businesses that are already doing it tough. Blake? Jodie Lee starting us off tonight. Now to Estelle Griepink. Estelle, the police minister is fed up with Victorians refusing to play by the rules. Well, Blake, police don't want to detract from the Victorians who are adhering to the restrictions, but they can't ignore the people who are continuing to do the wrong thing. Police have now done more than 200,000 community checks and more than 450,000 road checks. But if the latest stats are anything to go by, there are still people who aren't taking this virus seriously. Wearing a mask may not be comfortable, but it's a simple way to stay safe. I think it's a good idea. Protecting myself but protecting everyone around me. 
Face coverings becoming so normal, there's now even a market for mask accessories. We're also doing a ear saver band, which is a small little band that's designed to help alleviate the pressure behind your ears. But while most of us are doing the right thing, some refuse to. In the past 24 hours, 31 Victorians have been fined for not wearing a mask and authorities are shaking their heads over some staggering breaches of restrictions. There is absolutely no reason or need to drive from Melbourne to Wodonga to have a Big Mac. And that's one of the fines that was issued. I mean, if you really want a Big Mac, it's most, of the, most of the time it's on Uber Eats. So just order it off of that and stay home. Some excuses to police are hard to swallow. We had someone go from, from Bentley uh, up to Sunbury to get some takeaway. Now, why? There's absolutely no need. And, and it's because they're selfish. Police also find a man travelling from Melbourne to Ballarat twice to get some fresh air. Another man went from Thornbury to Werribee for a haircut. Ten people were fined at an Airbnb in West Melbourne, despite two hiding in a bedroom. Five others were caught partying at an apartment in the CBD, some there climbing into a closet to avoid police. We are still continuing to see appalling behaviour. Victorians themselves are fed up with. And as we prepare for the potential of an even stricter lockdown, a reminder that coronavirus can resurface. This is a stubborn thing. There's, there's no doubt about that. This is a very stubborn thing. It is, a, it is a wicked enemy. Cedar Meats, temporarily shut down in May after more than 100 workers tested positive, is now dealing with a fresh case. All workers have been sent home to isolate in the hopes of stopping a second wider outbreak. Clearly this pandemic has, has highlighted the challenge of, of processing food in these uh, restricted spaces. In the medium to long term we need to develop ways to avoid that sort of uh, uh, arrangement and that may involve some level, of course, of automation. In Thomastown, tens of thousands of face shields are being sent out to aged care facilities. We've had a number of aged care providers been contacting us as on Friday and they were desperate for the face shields. We're making sure we're urgently manufacturing, getting those orders out to those people that need them most at this stage. Another industry in desperate need of a major overhaul. Estelle Graypink, Seven News. Six more aged care homes are dealing with outbreaks tonight as the death toll rises by the day. Frightened families are telling Seven News they're being lied to about the condition of their loved ones. 88-year-old Nicolina Manuele has just been diagnosed with COVID-19. The only comfort her daughter could offer was this. She's stressed out at the moment. She's crying. Um... Look, it's really heartbreaking. A lot of lying's been going on, a lot of mis, um, miscommunication. Rosie Watts' mother, Francesca, has also tested positive. She's 86. The government's left all these old people in all these nursing homes down. Both elderly women live at the Cumberland Manor nursing home in Sunshine, quarantined with another 12 infected residents. Today, distressed family members waited outside, desperate for a glimpse of their loved ones and furious it's come to this. I'm ashamed these governments, they're all brain dead. That's all I can say, they're brain dead. A federal Ausmat team has now taken over care of the residents here, but many families feel help has come too late. They say regular staff failed to wear PPE. I spoke with them over a month ago and said to them why aren't they using their PPE and she said oh well, we don't have to. Our aged care sector was extremely under duress before COVID-19 came along. COVID-19 lit the fuse and we've seen the devastation it's caused. All residents from St Basil's have now been evacuated to private hospitals, some dehydrated and gravely malnourished. That cluster has now soared to 134 cases, while the second biggest aged care cluster at Epping Gardens has risen again to 118. We need to get additional resources, train new people, train other parts of the, of the sector and get additional uh, workforce replacements from interstate and around the country. The uh, situation in aged care remains very serious, a very significant challenge, very confronting in many ways. All three people added to Victoria's death toll today fell sick in aged care. 1,008 cases of the virus are now linked to nursing homes. 
The state government is facing heavy criticism for its handling of the crisis after accusations of a five-day delay between the outbreaks on July 9 and notifying the federal government on July 14. Today, the Premier denied it. Rather than trying to apportion blame on these things, we should be focused on providing care and support to these residents. WorkCover is now investigating at least 10 aged care facilities as authorities scramble to improve communication lines between homes and families. Constantly, you know, ringing them up. Half the time they haven't been picking up the phone. Christy Mayer, 7 News. New South Wales has its first coronavirus death in more than a month. An 83-year-old man linked to Sydney's Crossroads Hotel cluster. 17 new cases have been recorded across the state. There are calls for masks to be worn in Sydney's hotspots. And an Adelaide man who recently returned from Melbourne is the latest to test positive in South Australia. We have breaking news on a major development in the Eastern Freeway police tragedy. The manager of the truck company involved has been arrested. Cassie Zervos has exclusive details. Cassie detectives went in early this morning. Well, Blake, the Victorian manager of Connect Logistics, has spent the whole day here at police headquarters being quizzed by detectives. It's all part of Task Force Paragon, which has been investigating the fatal smash on the Eastern Freeway that claimed the lives of four Victorian police officers in April. He is a 49-year-old Frankston man, a father who is tonight facing the prospect of charges. Crouching between detectives is a man police suspect of playing a part in the deaths of four officers in the Eastern Freeway crash. Simon Taturu, the Victorian manager of Connect Logistics, was arrested at work this morning by detectives from the Major Collisions Investigation Unit. Leading Senior Constable Lynette Taylor, Senior Constable Kevin King, Constable Glenn Humphreys and Constable Joshua Presney were killed while they intercepted a Porsche on the freeway. <laughs> More than three months after a truck crashed into them, detectives took Mr Tuturu to police headquarters where they spent the day interviewing the father. Seven News believes police quizzed him about his duty of care to truck driver Mahinda Singh and other operational standards within the company. In April, Mr Singh allegedly swerved across several lanes on the Eastern Freeway before hitting four police officers. He is currently behind bars to face court again later this year. In May, Victoria Police travelled to New South Wales and raided Connect Logistics head office in Riverston and two homes. A number of documents were seized, including logbooks. Mr Tuturu has spent the day at police headquarters in custody. Cassie Zervos, 7 News. A motorbike rider has been killed and two others are injured after a collision in Mount Martha. It's understood the rider lost control around a bend and crashed. A second motorbike then struck the wreck, injuring both the rider and a female passenger. They've been taken to hospital and police want anyone who saw what happened to get in touch. Scott Morrison's home builder scheme has hit a major roadblock with Victorians unable to apply for cash grants. Critics say it's being rolled out too slowly, but the government insists it is saving jobs. A program to save tradies jobs and nudge Australia to recovery. This is going to make a big difference for them and it's going to make a big difference for the economy. Fast forward two months, the Prime Minister now hailing the scheme as... A tremendous success. The grants of $25,000 to build a new home or start a major renovation had a forecast uptake of 27,000 Australians, yet nearly 42,000 have registered their interest so far. Pleasantly surprised with just how popular the Home Builder program has been. But not a single grant has yet been paid, of nearly $700 million set aside, and many still can't even apply. The grants distributed through state revenue offices, but the online applications still aren't ready in New South Wales, Victoria or the Northern Territory, with Queensland's website only going live in the past 24 hours. It would be great to see a conclusion of all the paperwork and the application systems up and running. This scheme is rolling out slower than a three-legged turtle with arthritis. Despite the delays, the building industry insists the program will prevent the pipeline of residential construction from drying up, but only for the rest of this year urging the government to use the October budget to extend the grants until mid-next year. 
facing significant concerns in terms of a pipeline of future work for 2021. And hoping Australians in all states can apply much sooner. Olivia Leeming, 7 News. England is tightening restrictions again as COVID case numbers surge to their highest in months. Hopes of returning to normal by Christmas are slipping away, with British PM Boris Johnson warning rules may get even tougher. As Britain sweltered through its hottest day of the year, 38 degrees in some parts, the Prime Minister put the brakes on lifting the lockdown. We should now squeeze that brake pedal, squeeze that brake pedal in order to keep the virus under control. Some places that were going to be allowed to open this weekend now can't. And parts of the north of England, including Manchester, now face tougher rules, banned from visiting others' homes. Nobody wears masks. Nobody des distances. Nobody cares. They really don't. I don't want to tell people to spend less time with their friends. But unless people follow the rules and behave safely, we may need to go further. The infection rate in England has doubled since June. For the first time here, there is now talk of trade-offs. For every freedom allowed, something may be taken away or delayed. We have probably reached near the limits or the limits of what we can do in terms of opening up society. The idea that we can open up everything and keep the virus under control is clearly wrong. Warning, fresh outbreaks of the virus will only continue. In London, Hugh Whitfeld, 7 News. Collingwood has been hit with a $50,000 fine after coach Nathan Buckley broke AFL protocol in the club's Perth hub. Anna Hay is with the Pies in WA. Anna, Buckley is the latest big name to be caught out. Blake Buckley and Collingwood's assistant coach Brenton Sanderson's broke strict protocols when they played tennis with two people not approved to be at their Perth hotel yesterday afternoon. Seven News understands former Aussie tennis star Alicia Mollick was one of the two people involved. The AFL says both Buckley and Sanderson immediately reported the breach to club officials. But it hasn't saved them. The club has been hit with a $50,000 fine with 25000 of that suspended. It comes just a day after Richmond, Carlton, Hawthorne and North Melbourne were given similar sanctions. Now, we understand Buckley and Sanderson will personally be paying those fines. Blake. All right, Anna, thank you very much. Jackie Felgate is here with more sport. Jack, what a return for Mad Jack Dawg. Oh, Blake, it was a magical day for the Kangaroos cult hero as North Melbourne Blake. demolished Adelaide on the Gold Coast. As we said, it's an amazing story. It's a human triumph story. That's what it is. Over the past two years, the battles I've gone through, that's worth it. Winning with your teammates. Also, the Saints on the march against the Swans will tell you what got John Longmire furious. Hawks coach Alistair Clarkson takes aim and fires shots at his critics. And the ultimate surprise that leads to a rooftop rally with Roger Federer. And Blake, we are live to Perth ahead of Geelong's big clash with your Eagles. I'm looking forward to it, Jackie. Me too. And to begin. Thank you. <laughs> Up next, a fatal blow to the head sparks a murder investigation in one of Melbourne's most affluent suburbs. Also, how an undercover operation pulled off an $80 million cocaine bust. The streets of New York divided as Donald Trump faces double trouble and a cowardly thief caught on camera. As major new developments unfold, in Madeleine McCann's disappearance. Monday, the new revelations. He was there. All leading to one key person. Now, we can reveal all the details. Madeleine McCann, the hunt for the prime suspect. Monday, 9.30 on 7. Tonight, I'll be eating a chicken kebab with extra hot sauce. For training purposes, you cannot beat a bowl cut. What have you done? Thanks. People are going to think we're sisters. Hi, thanks for calling HIF. You're speaking to HIF. What does HIF stand for? Great Value Health Cover. Oh, you mean the letters. <laughs> the Health Insurance Fund of Australia. 
Yeah, we've been around for over 65 years. And that's human years, not dog years. <laughs> Never mind. Now, can I fetch you a quote? <laughs> this year, Swinburne University's Open Day is switching up the scenery with a trip to Swintopia. Our immersive virtual campus experience. Jump in 12 August. From home time to sleepy time, IKEA designs around life's precious moments. So make mess, mohawks, and laugh until your belly hurts. Because with IKEA, there really is no place like home. When your little one has cold and flu symptoms, you can trust Nurofen for children. It effectively relieves the four signs of cold and flu, and best of all, it starts working on fever from just 15 minutes and lasts up to eight hours. For fast, long-lasting fever relief, get Nurofen for children for a great price at Chemist Warehouse. Want to sell something for instant cash? Looking to buy from a huge range of quality second-hand goods for less? Cash Converters. Find us online or visit us in-store. We took CrimSafe, Australia's strongest security door and a competitor's door, and put them to the test. If it's not CrimSafe, it's not CrimSafe. A fight at a house in Hawthorne East has turned deadly. It's understood two men were arguing when one was fatally struck on the head. Police arrested the suspect and have been questioning him for more than 24 hours. Investigators say the two are known to each other and they're still trying to piece together what happened. Members of a Melbourne crime syndicate with links to the Italian mafia have been charged trying to smuggle $80 million of cocaine into Australia. It's one of the biggest busts made by our federal police who have been tracking the case for two years. On a bush airstrip near Port Moresby, a light plane crashed and abandoned. The aircraft, Australian bound, carrying 500 kilograms of cocaine. This is one of the highest drug uh, busts uh, in relation to cocaine that we've um, experienced. Behind the smuggle, an alleged Melbourne-based crime syndicate with links to an Italian mafia who were being watched by authorities as part of a two-year investigation. What the men did not know, however, is that the Queensland Joint Organised Crime Task Force, working with Victoria Police and the ACIC, was aware of their plan. On Sunday, July 26, a pilot who authorities say is a member of the syndicate took off in the small plane, departing from Mariba in North Queensland before landing at Papalele, flying low to avoid radar detection. The plane en route to collect $80 million worth of cocaine. This audacious attempt shows the great lengths that syndicates will go to bring these substances into Australia. But the plan came unstuck with the aircraft crash. The AFP believed the weight of the cocaine had a significant impact on the plane's ability to take off, saying greed was a major factor for the syndicate's activities. Police had already swooped on three men at Atherton near Mariba, another two in Melbourne. The pilot handed himself in to the Australian consulate in PNG after fleeing the crash site. Greed leading to one of the biggest cocaine busts in Australian history. Brittany Lane, 7 News. Black Lives Matter protesters have marched on Trump Towers in New York demanding reform of police forces. But the president hit back, doubling down on his law and order pitch during a controversial campaign stopover in Florida. Night 64, and with no sign of slowing, <laughs> demonstrators again faced off with police on the streets of Portland. Their demands for equality still echoing across America. In New York, the brother of George Floyd addressed protesters picketing Trump Towers. But we're not afraid and we're not going nowhere. While the mother of a man murdered by police urged the crowd to hold the line. It can't only mean Black Lives Matter when we are murdered by the police. But as authorities too hold the line, the president has questioned the rallying tactics. 
seizing on reports of violence, with some caught pelting police with bricks, frozen water and even canned soup. And when they get caught, they say, no, no, this is just soup for my family. It's it wouldn't be long. They wouldn't be throwing soup at these guys. The president's law and order pitch was front and centre at a whirlwind campaign stopover in Florida, a state now in the firing line on two fronts. While it battles a surge in COVID cases, a hurricane is gathering steam just off the coast. 140 kilometre an hour winds expected to make landfall overnight. Make sure you have your plan, make sure you have seven days of food and supplies and medicine. Those staying preparing for the worst, while those who can leave. I gotta get out of here, it's right behind me, I'm leaving. <laughs> In the United States, David Woywood, 7 News. Users of popular video app TikTok could be looking for a new pastime, with Donald Trump banning its use in the US, claiming security concerns. The president says he'll take action against the Chinese-owned company using emergency economic powers or an executive order. The Australian government is still examining the risks. The app's executives will appear before a Senate committee later this month. A thief has stolen betting tickets from an elderly punter at a pub in Perth. The pensioner left his table to place a bet when the young crook pocketed the TAB tickets and quickly walked away. Pub regulars have rallied around him, donating money to make up for his loss. More trouble tonight for bikey enforcer Toby Mitchell, caught up in police raids, seizing drugs, firearms and luxury cars. Plus, surfer versus shark, a young Aussie's incredible survival. Relief for women fighting ovarian cancer and the run-down Mediterranean villa for a queen. Her son's death is his second chance. We have to protect him from the truth. But the secret her son was hiding... I will never forgive you if you lie to me. ...will start an unstoppable chain of events between two worlds. Sunday, 8.30 on 7. Craving fresh? Get your free delivery fee with Subway on Uber Eats. As if you didn't need a reason to stay in already. Just spend $15 and use the promo code SUBWAY2U to get fresh, delivered free. Subway. With Belong, you get 10 gigs of mobile data for $25 a month. That's 10 gigs of family time, plus unlimited international calls and texts to selected countries for $5 extra. Together, we're different. Belong. Meet the crew. Multi mic. Never make single bets. Just multis. Next up, Nate. Dogs, trots, golf, plays whatever's coming. Finchy, only best to over. Yes, yes. And this is me. I've always got the answer. Make this AFL season one to remember. For 20 straight days of footy, get 20 straight days of points bets early payout. Lead at half time and you win. Points bet. Creating something that feels just right, that's an art. Precisely crafted and beautifully finished. All new Mazda CX-30, everything just right. What could I do with a bonus $50? Mmm, order some pizza. Open a new Westpac Choice account online between 1st of July and 6th of October and get a helpful $50. Apply in just three minutes. Get that renovation feeling at ENS with massive kitchen savings. Like this oven from the brand new Westinghouse range, built in Adelaide, only $7.99. And save up to $1,000 on Falcon cookers, made in England with a five year warranty. Our consultants are kitchen, bathroom, and laundry experts, and we won't be beaten on price. So visit one of our nine showrooms today or shop online and get the ENS feeling for less. Whatever plans you had for your future, they're still waiting for you. Because if you're with Host Plus, you're with one of Australia's top performing super funds over the long term. With some of the lowest admin fees, Host Plus, we go with you. Craving fresh? Get your free delivery fee with Subway on Uber Eats. As if you didn't need a reason to stay in already. Just spend $15 and use the promo code SUBWAY2U to get fresh, delivered free. Subway. Ten people have been arrested in anti-bikey raids across the city. 
Officers seized drugs, luxury cars, cash and guns from more than a dozen properties linked to the Mongols. Enforcer Toby Mitchell uploaded a video of police inside their clubhouse. Four men have been charged and six other people have been released. A young surfer has had an incredible escape from the jaws of a great white on Australia's west coast. The injured man stuffed his board into the predator's mouth to survive before being hauled from the water by another surfer. A shaka and a smile. Surfer Phil Mummett lucky to escape the jaws of a shark with his life. His surfboard taking the brunt of an attack from what witnesses say was a five metre great white. The shark bit his board and had the rear of the board in his mouth. The 28-year-old was surfing at Bunker Bay, three hours south of Perth. He was kicking him and trying to push him off. Witness Brent Jones says he owes his life to two nearby surfers who hauled him from the water onto one of their boards and paddled him to the safety of the shore. All I can say is they deserve medals because the shark was just huge. He's got a big, deep gash on his thigh. Um, he's got some smaller gashes as well. Phil was flown here to Bunbury Regional Hospital with his girlfriend, who was on the beach with their puppy at the time of the attack. She tells us he's since had surgery and is recovering well. Today, another 3.5 metre shark was spotted at the same spot, but Phil's family say it won't keep him out of the water. Well, he loves the surfing and he's very easygoing and it wouldn't, you know, it's just Jennifer said it wouldn't surprise us for him to get back into the surf. Amber Johnston, 7 News. A breakthrough ovarian cancer medication is now available to more Australian women after being added to the pharmaceutical benefit scheme. The drug starves the deadly cells, preventing them from spreading to other parts of the body. Amy McHugh, a devoted mum. Good job. And a fighter. So about two years ago, I, I knew I was gaining a little bit of weight, but, I mean, at my age, who doesn't? She was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. I had an operation and then I had chemo as well. So that lasted for uh, about six months. Ovarian cancer is one of the deadliest women's cancers in Australia. There's no early detection test. A breakthrough pill keeping Amy's cancer from coming back for a year so far. Lynn Parza now listed on the pharmaceutical benefits scheme. It works for ovarian cancer patients with a BRCA gene mutation either inside their tumour or a hereditary mutation. The drug starving cancer cells, slowing the spread. It's called the silent disease because a lot of the symptoms can be associated with other conditions. Until now, treatment options for women with ovarian cancer have been limited. Chemotherapy was the only weapon for around 40 years. But there's so much doctors are now learning about the role of genetics. So as a BRCA mutation carrier myself, I've seen science and medicine evolve at such a rapid rate over the last decade. Any option I had to increase the chances of, of survival I was really thankful for. Serena Andaloro, 7 News. The youngest son of media tycoon Rupert Murdoch has quit Loser. News Corporation uh, after a bitter world. dispute over editorial content. James Murdoch resigned from the board he served on with his father and brother since 2013. His views on climate change and politics have long been at odds with conservative views shared by many at News Corp. The man convicted of the Boston Marathon bombing has had his death sentence overturned. Jokar Tsarnaev was found guilty of 30 charges linked to the 2013 attack that killed three people and left hundreds injured. Tsarnaev's lawyers argued that intense media coverage made it impossible for him to have a fair trial in Boston. A panel of three judges overturned the original sentence with a new trial set to decide the bomber's fate. A rundown Mediterranean villa where the Queen spent some of the best years in her life is about to get a multi-million dollar facelift. Her Majesty and Prince Philip lived there as newlyweds while he was stationed in Malta with the Royal Navy. Barely fit for a queen, but it was home to a princess. Malta greets the arrival of Princess Elizabeth. At the Villa Guadiamanja, the princess joined the Duke. 
who is serving as first lieutenant of the destroyer Chequers in time to celebrate their second wedding anniversary. The now dilapidated villa near Malta's capital was rented by Philip's uncle, Louis Mountbatten, but between 1949 and 1951, it served as the couple's modest residence. Six bedrooms, three bathrooms, a grand hall, garden and bomb shelter. After years of trying, the Maltese government recently bought the property with plans to make it a museum of the country's links to the royals. They're looking for locals to share stories. People used to work here or had relatives who worked here or have any memories of whatever kind of when the princess used to live here. The Queen has previously described her time in Malta as some of her happiest days where she could live normally, driving herself around town and going shopping away from the pressure of her public life. For the time being, the gloom of winter was forgotten amid the sunshine of Malta. A reflection of the happiness of the princess in this brief stay with her sailor husband. In London, Sarah Greenolch, 7 News. Still ahead, the hunt for thieves after a destructive smash and grab in Melbourne's northwest. Also, how dangerous criminals use bedsheets to make a daring escape from jail. An emotional honour for our diggers to mark a wartime milestone. And Roger Federer wins hearts with a surprise rooftop visit. Is there something wrong with the track? Play what we just recorded in reverse. Me just call my name, I'll be there in a hurry. And the Aussie taking on the best on the world's biggest stage, blindfolded. It just keeps getting more amazing. Gave me goosebumps. New America's Got Talent, Tuesday, 7.30 on 7. Rain, hail and save at Chemist Warehouse. Our amazing August catalogue sale on now. Get Remy Femin 200 tablets value pack $32.99. Microgenics Protect Prostate Formula 60 capsules $13.99. Healthy Care Coenzyme Q10 150 milligram 100 capsules $20.39. And Uganic Certified Organic Toddler Milk 800 grams $30.99. For the biggest range at the lowest price, shop at Chemist Warehouse and stop paying too much. <gasps> Getting back on the road is something we're all looking forward to. And at Toyota, we're here to help you do just that. Get a 3.9% comparison rate across the Corolla hatch and sedan range. Oh, what a feeling. Toyota. At Priceline Pharmacy, help take care of pain with Australia's most trusted pain relief brand, Panadol. With Panadol Extra 40 caplets for $9.99 and 20 caplets for $5.99. Plus Panadol Rapid 20 caplets for $4.99. You don't want to miss out on fast pain relief at Priceline. Thanks for calling ING. This is Adam speaking. How can I help you? Uh, no, I'm currently working from home. Oh, uh, you can call anytime, so... Uh... Sorry! <laughs> and she's currently nibbling at my toe right now. Yeah, working from home was a bit tricky at first, but... There's definitely been some straight farts, um, hasn't there, mate? And now your loan's on a fixed rate. Can I help you with anything else? No, uh, you made my day. Well, whatever 2020 throws at you, we're here for a chat anytime. Too easy. Save up to 10% on your first year's premium when you get a new Allianz home insurance policy online. Okay, done. Uh... Uh... Get that? Leon's feeling. Search for a quote today. One dollar upsize deal on Sleepmaker and Beautyrest mattresses and ensembles now at Harvey Norman. That's right. Purchase a selected Australian-made Sleepmaker or Beautyrest queen-size mattress or ensemble and for one dollar more, upgrade to a king-size. Plus, buy on 60 months interest-free and receive a bonus gift card valued at up to $500. Harvey Norman, supporting Australian-made and local manufacturing with a one dollar upsize deal on selected Sleepmaker and Beautyrest mattresses and ensembles. Offer ends this weekend. Go! Oh, Daryl Braithwaite's new track. Hold your horses. Well, he's no one trick pony. <laughs> Did 
this track, you'd say he's off to the races. There it is. The hunt is on for thieves who ram raided a pharmacy in Mooney Ponds. They smashed their way in through the front doors around four o'clock this morning. They made off with bottles of perfume before making a quick getaway. There's been a dramatic jailbreak in the US where prisoners tied bedsheets together to escape from 40 metres up. It set off a huge manhunt for the now injured cellmates. The aftermath of a daring escape. Sheets tied together, hanging from a broken window on the 12th floor of a high security prison. Two inmates had scaled the wall, shimmying down the makeshift rope. One forced to jump from the fourth floor, breaking his leg. The other abandoning his partner in crime, making a run for it as police scoured the area. They have not been able to find him yet. Hours later, they did. The accused murderer arrested, roaming residential streets. This, this man had nothing to lose uh, facing first degree murder charges. Um, still amazing to me um, that, that, that he was able to escape, but once again, our job is, is to put him back in jail. That's what we've done today. The jail now left to explain how two dangerous criminals could escape in broad daylight and be missing for hours before being noticed. That's the busiest time of the jail. Shift change is going on that time. So, again, that is probably the most chaotic time. A chaotic time inside that led to a chaotic time outside. In the United States, Amelia Brace, 7 News. Coronavirus restrictions have forced the cancellation of all public events, marking the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. To make amends, the federal government has launched an extraordinary mission to honour every single surviving veteran. 75 years on, Australia honours 97-year-old Reg Selwyn. And the message on is pretty simple, thank you for your service. A special commemorative medal and certificate for this New Guinea veteran. Good looking young fella. That was, wasn't I? Yeah. <laughs> Marking the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. And I'm proud of my service. So let's go mad for one unforgettable day. Reg will never forget hearing the news on the Pacific front line. We all throw our hats in there. With all anniversary celebrations now cancelled, all surviving veterans will receive the medals. This is the least we can do for this extraordinary generation of Australians. Then a 19-year-old sailor, now 94, George Rafel, recalls vividly the Japanese surrender. But the bar was open and that was it. It was a write-off day. People let themselves go in an unparalleled wave of carnival gaiety. Oh, joy, exultation, relief. George was to be fated at an anniversary event. The medal, great consolation. I think I see the smile on my face and I think about it. Surprisingly, there are still 12,000 surviving Australian veterans of World War II, all of them now in their 90s. But they say this tribute is also for those who never came home. The country's still remembering them. Nick McCallum, 7 News. Tennis champion Roger Federer has surprised a couple of young fans. After this video of two Italians playing on their rooftops during lockdown went viral, he joined them for a hit. Shall we play it or no? Uh, <laughs> The Swiss legend also organised places for them in Rafael Nadal's Tennis Academy. It's good to have good friends in high places. How good is that? Yes. Jackie, you're back with sport. Yeah. What a day for Mad Jack Dorf. Oh, it was brilliant. Blake, he was the man of the moment as he made an incredible return. The whole kangaroo squad rallied around the cult hero to celebrate a fairy tale comeback. Dan Butler runs riot against the Swans as John Longmire loses his cool. We're live to Perth to get the final word ahead of the Cats clash with West Coast. And how this baseball umpire came off second best. I reckon there's trouble. I reckon there's trouble. Tonight, a massive Saturday night showdown. Game on! Can the Cats dominate the West? Here they come. Or will the Eagles send them flying? There it is, there it is! In a clash that will rock the top eight. He's got it! He's got the it! The festival of footy continues tonight on 7.
Meet the crew, they got their own way of betting. And this is me, I've always got the answer. Make this AFL season one to remember. For 20 straight days of footy, get 20 straight days of points bets early payout. Lead at half time and you win. Points bet. Ominous blocks of swirling gas float above landscapes. Carbon thumbprint, the amount of atmospheric CO2 resulting from mobile data use. What's your carbon thumbprint? Belong, carbon neutral, mobile and internet. Rain, hail and save at Chemist Warehouse. Our amazing August catalogue sale on now. Get any Demerson cold relief, 200 mil, 9.99. Blackmore's Probiotics Plus Daily Health, 90 capsules, 34.99. Wellgrove Immune Support Olive Leaf Extract, 500 mil, 22.49. And any Optislim Mill Replacement Shake, 27.99. For the biggest range at the lowest price, shop at Chemist Warehouse and stop paying too much. Small. Oh baby, baby, feed me, baby, feed me, oh, feed me. Time, powerless to resist. Illusion and Ultimate provide an essential heating service and we're open. See our huge range of Australian-made gas and wood heaters with social distancing, temperature checks and hand sanitising in store to keep you safe. Illusion and Ultimate, Dandenong, Epping and North Geelong. Even remotely, our home loan specialists can zoom into your home to help you save on your next loan. I love a sunburnt country. A land of sweeping plains. Of ragged mountain ranges. Of droughts and flooding rains. I love her far horizons. I love her jewel sea. Her beauty and her terror. The wide brown land for me. The 100% Aussie beef in Macca's Burgers comes from farms like David's in Queensland. My family supplies 100% Aussie beef to McDonald's. Thanks, David. Get into Macca's for hot, juicy, tasty burgers today. Stay true to yourself. Follow your dreams. Just make sure you have the suspension to keep up. What's a bartender, a banker and a lifeguard got in common? One giant problem. Everyone who comes on gets cooked. On New The Chase, weekdays on 7. This Sport Report brought to you by the Ford Ranger. Live the Ranger life. Welcome back. Magic Door has made an incredible return to football, stealing the show in the Kangaroos' 69-point win over Adelaide. It ended a six-game losing streak as Door overcame adversity to fight his way back. In a remarkable year, a truly remarkable comeback. It's a human triumph story, that's what it is. It's been two years um, since I played and um, there's no better feeling than winning. I think... Um, over the past two years, the battles I've gone through. One that left one of footy's toughest men in tears. To see a young man reclaim his status, it's, it's awesome for people like us. It really is fantastic to see him reclaim his life. Majak Daw playing his first game in more than 700 days after falling from the Balti Bridge and recovering from horrific injuries. Majak Daw! Beautiful mark. North were never challenged. No one comes at him. Leave him free. Bangs it towards goal. In the second half, Majak was still finding his feet. Oh! Curtis Taylor left to hobble to the bench. Matthew Nix resorted to drink bottles to explain the game plan at half time. That didn't stop North securing a thumping 64 point win. To everyone back on tour, they're doing it pretty tough at the moment. So um, to all our supporters, I hope this win means something to you. Just fantastic.
St Kilda's purple patch is continuing with Brett Ratton's side dominating the opening half against Sydney at the Gabba. The Saints jumped out to a 30-point lead midway through the third term and currently lead the injury-hit Swans by 22 points. As one superstar forward watched on from behind the glass, a superstar of the future got some close attention before the opening bounce as the informed Saints began strongly. And Gresham got away. No one near him. The St Kilda speedsters causing the problems for John Longmire. Hunter Clark intruding into the forward line with a sharp left foot. Paddy Ryder dominating the hit outs. The Saints surged forward at every chance. Jade Gresham just as good in the air. And at the back. Dan Butler adding another to his season tally with Max King rising high. But King still takes the mark anyway. Right in front, kicks through the ball. And the Saints are right on top of the gather. A much needed goal for the Swans right on the halftime siren stemmed the bleeding, but a former Swan would get one back against his old side. Nothing better than to thread that right through for his status. Jake Carlisle paying close attention to Dane Rampey's broken hand. Andrew McCormack, 7 News. Tim Kelly will face off with the Cats in Perth tonight for the first time since he left Geelong. Anna Hay is at Optus Stadium for us. Hi, Anna. This is Geelong's biggest test of the season so far. Jackie, it is. They're up against flag favourites, the Eagles, who are in season best form. West Coast absolutely demolished Premiership contenders, the Pies, here at Optus Stadium just last week. Now, Tim Kelly was the star of that show and, of course, he's someone the Cats know inside out. Geelong are still without their skipper, Joel Selwood, and midfielder Gary Ablett. The club says it's taking a cautious approach with Selwood and how they manage his hamstring injury. Now, they are preparing to play four games in just 14 days. Simon Lloyd gave seven news an update on how Ablett is tracking and when we can expect to see him return. It's a day-by-day -day proposition for Gaz and uh, he has been training really hard. He's been doing uh, some high-intensity work and high volume and we've just got to make sure that we give Gary, Jordan and their family the privacy they need to work through what they need to work. And Collingwood have dropped four in tomorrow night's clash against Fremantle here at Optus Stadium, but they will be bolstered by the return of vice-captain Steele Sidebottom. As for Fremantle, they welcome back their skipper, Nat Fife. Jackie. OK, thank you very much, Anna. Hawthorne coach Alistair Clarkson has taken a swipe at his critics. The Hawks got their first win in hub life, coming back from five goals down against the Blues. Uh, we just stuck fat. It's been a, a really tough period trying to push her. A divide between anyone and our footy club is just a, a fruitless exercise really because we're so strong and tight from the board right through to the coaching area and the players. Hawthorne has a nine-day break in Perth before facing Fremantle. Bombers coach John Worsfold said stay clear of weighing into the debate of umpiring despite more holding the ball confusion. I don't spend a lot of time stressing about it. I think it swings and roundabouts. There's two teams playing to the same interpretation. I don't think it's an interpretation against one team or the other. The 63-point demolition by Brisbane leaves Essendon in danger of dropping out of the top eight by the end of the weekend. Melbourne City has returned to the pitch for their first game since March and it took until the 57th minute to find the back of the net against league leaders Sydney FC. You may have the Premier's plate, Sydney FC, but Melbourne City are hunting a championship. City lead 2-0 and sits second with two more games before finals. Paddy Mills looks ready to play but was mysteriously absent from San Antonio's lineup against Sacramento today. The Spurs say he's not injured. They claim a 129-120 to win over Sacramento in their first game of the NBA's relaunch. And if you think footy umpires have a tough job, check out this poor ump in the Major League Baseball who copped a wild bat to the head. You might need a second look. It left 67-year-old Joe West with a bloodied face. Thankfully, though, he did come back on the field later in the game. And don't forget, the footy tonight starts on seven straight after the news. Blake, it is my cats and your eagles live and free from Perth. We might have to have a bottle of wine on that one. Bring it on. The bet's live. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> There's been plenty of sunshine this weekend. Melina is next with the forecast. Mel, how long has it got to last? Well, Blake, tomorrow will be sunny as well, but we'll have a dramatic change at the start of the week. I'll have all those details next.
want to fall in love and live happily ever after. We hit it off from the start. She's definitely someone I probably could fall for. I only had my eyes on Alex. Hopefully at the end of the day, I find a wife. We have the spark and I really want to make that a flame. I might have kissed someone. <gasps> what? what? <laughs> She's a threat. I'm threatened by you. Really not here to be best friends with everyone. Can I just have a minute, please? You're scaring me. I don't know how to fix this. I really like her. Just hoping she doesn't run away. This is the night a farmer makes one of the most important decisions of his life. New Farmer Wants a Wife on 7. You can't miss it. Sunday at 7. Life's full of... <gasps> and... And even... From the bathroom to the computer, car, barbecue, windows, floors... No matter how messy life gets, Handy Paper Towel is handy for every situation. Every spill, smear or smudge. Handy Paper Towel. Keep it handy. She loves cats. So tonight, I'll borrow my neighbours. <laughs> my babies. Temptations Cat Treats. This year, Swinburne University's Open Day is switching up the scenery with a trip to Swintopia. Our immersive virtual campus experience. Jump in 12 August. OK, long black for Dave, skinny latte for Dave, hot chockey for Dave and cappuccino for David. Okay. Who's David? <laughs> From a dollar each, shout the team at 7-Eleven. With McDelivery, Macca's comes to you contact free. For a limited time, get free delivery on Macca's orders $25 or more via the Uber Eats app. Search Macca's social pages for the promo code. At the Mazda Open Road Sale, you'll discover great value, like Mazda CX-5 Max from 32,990 Drive Away. And right now, across the state, we're still open to support you. It's more than just the moments. There was a tremendous amount of expectation. It's the untold secrets. I broke my ankle. A new world record. All the drama. I was crying, I'm like, I don't want to go out to compete. Susie O'Neill goes in the touch first. I was just so afraid. They have won the gold medal! I know you will score the winning goal. It's everything you never knew. Can you believe it? Sydney 2000, uncovered Tuesday on 7. You may not be able to travel the world right now, but these flavours are about to take you there. This dish... It's Vietnam. It's being able to travel the world without moving from my seat. Yeah. Oh. This is the World Cup of cooking. Plates of origin. Hello again. It's been a lovely and sunny start to the weekend. It wasn't too cold overnight with a low of nine in the city before a uh, top of 16 degrees outside now. It is sitting on 13 in the city. It was mostly sunny across the state once high cloud cleared out during this morning. It was pretty breezy and fresh at times over the south, but winds were generally moderate northerlies. Around the suburbs, Avalon and Geelong got to 19 degrees. It was 18 at Werribee and at Cranbourne as well. With those Sunny skies and northerly winds across the state. Our top temperatures were above the August average. Mildura and Walpia both made it to 21 degrees. 15 at Bendigo, 18 there at Bairnsdale.
Taking a look at the satellite, this large high has been bringing us these sunny days, but a cold front will reach far southwest Victoria tonight. It will weaken as it moves east, and during Sunday night and Monday, a cold front and associated low will move in, crossing southern Victoria early on Tuesday. So conditions will be pretty similar tomorrow, but on Monday, isolated showers in the southwest start to extend across southern and mountain areas later in the day. There will be even more showers on Tuesday and temperatures will plummet as cold air is pushed up from the south. We could have snow down to 400 metres during the morning. Around the nation for tomorrow, sunny in Brisbane and Sydney, partly cloudy in Adelaide and showers developing over in Perth. But in Victoria, just the north could start with some patchy morning fog and frost. It will be partly cloudy with isolated showers across the southwest and south central parts later in the day, but dry and mostly sunny across the north and the east. The southwest will be cooler, but most other places will be mild with light to moderate. North to northwesterly winds up to 22 in Mildura, 17 in Bendigo, 19 at Orbost, 18 at Bairnsdale. It'll be mostly sunny over metropolitan areas. There is just the slight chance of a shower in the southeastern suburbs and our top temperatures will mainly be around 16 and 17 degrees and it's mostly sunny in the city with a low of 8 and a top of 17 degrees. A shower or two on Monday most likely in the afternoon and evening 15 degrees. Then we have a string of very cold days, a low of 5 and a top of 11 on Tuesday with showers, hail and snow possible on Mount Dandenong. A shower or two on Wednesday, 11 again and we could see showers right through to this time next week but mostly sunny tomorrow, Blake. Very sunny top. Thank you, Melina. That is 7 News. Thanks for making us part of your Saturday. Stay with us. We're going straight to Perth for the big game at Optus Stadium with the Cats taking on the Eagles from the 7 News team. Good night.